Today's lesson is on 4.2a, determine slope and y-intercept from a graph. And our goal for this lesson is to review finding slope and learn to identify the y-intercept from a graph. So the first thing that I want to do is go back and review finding slope from a graph. This lesson was originally 3.2a, so if you forgot how to find slope from a graph and you need more examples than what I'm going through here, please go back and watch that video. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you guys are able to be able to identify the slope from a graph. So if you don't remember how to do that, go back to 3.2a. I'll go over a few examples here, but I'm not going to go through all the steps. So please go back to 3.2a, watch that video, so that you have a good understanding on how to find slope from a graph. Also, since we are talking about graphs, you need to make sure that you're using graph paper for this lesson. All right, let's take a look at a couple examples of finding slope from a graph. All right, so for our first example, we have this red line graphed right here. And if you remember back to finding slope from a graph, we want to start from the point that's further to the left. So we have this point here and this point here. Obviously, this point is further to the left. And from this point, we want to go up or down to get to where we're level with the other point. So obviously, that means we need to rise up. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line representing my rise. All right, so here's my line representing my line. And I see that I have to travel up one, two, three, four grid lines to get level with my blue point. So I'm going to give this a value of plus four. Okay, now from that point, I need to run to the right. We should always end up running to the right. If we're not running to the right, then we did not start with the point that's further to the left. All right, this line has a value of plus 2, okay? So we need to remember slope is equal to rise over run. And so in this case, our slope is equal to our rise has a value of 4. Our run has a value of 2. And so we can re reduce or simplify that to 2 over 1. Or we could just say that m equals 2. Okay, so that's our first example, finding slope from a line. Let's take a look at another one. Second graph, we have this blue line here. Going from, going through the points negative 3 comma 1 and negative 1 comma negative 1. So again, negative 3 comma 1 is right here. And then, I'm sorry, this is negative 3 comma 1. And then negative 1 comma negative 1 is here. So we start at the point that's further to the left. We always want to start with the point that's further left. And we need to rise up or rise down to get level with the other point. Well, for this one, we need to rise down until we get level with the other point. And so because we go down two grid lines, I'm going to give that a value of negative 2. And then I'm going to run it to the right two units, giving me a value of plus 2. My run should always be positive. Again, my, if I run to the right, my run will always be positive. And so if you end up with a run to the left or a negative run, that means you did not start from the point that's further to the left. Start from the point that's further to the left, and it will, you will always have a positive run, which means you'll have a positive denominator. In my opinion, that is easier to deal with. All right, so let's go ahead, simplify the slope. So we have m is equal to, our rise is negative 2, over our run is positive 2. So when we simplify that, negative 2 over positive 2 gives us negative 1 over 1. Or we can just say that the, our slope is equal to negative 1. I would encourage you to leave your slopes as a fraction, the way that we have them here. However, my HRW will often ask for answers that look more like this. Okay, so my opinion, leave it as a fraction. My HRW will probably have answers where they're looking for questions where they're looking for answers like this. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. All right, for our next example, we again have our first point at negative 3 comma 1 and our second point at 3 comma 5 over here. Okay, so those are the two points we're dealing with for this one. Again, what we do, we start with the point that's further to the left, and we rise up, or we rise down until we're level with this other point here. So in this example, we want to rise up until we're level with the other point, giving that a value of plus 4. 
and then I'm going to run right until I end up at the other point, giving that a value of plus 6. So I'm going to slope here. M is equal to 4 over 6, which is going to reduce to 2 thirds. Let's take a look at one more of these, and then we'll move on to the next part of our lesson. All right, for our last review example, we have points at negative 4 comma negative 2 and 4 comma negative 4. Okay, so those are the two, two points that we're finding the slope between. So we start at the point that's further on the left right here. We have to ask ourselves, do we rise up or do we rise down? Obviously, in this case, we rise down. And so I'm going to go down two units until I'm level with the other point. So I'm going down two. Then I go to the right, a total of plus eight. Okay, so my slope, I'm going to put it in the second quadrant. We have m is equal to negative two over eight, which when we simplify that, we're going to have m is equal to negative one fourth. Okay, so all of those were just a little bit of review of how to find slope from a graph. Next, we're going to talk a little bit more about what the y-intercept is all about and then how to find it from a graph as well. All right, so time for a couple definitions. So our first definition that we need to go over is, called, is what's called the y-intercept. The y-intercept can be defined as the y-coordinate of the point where the graph intersects the y-axis. The x-coordinate of that point is always going to be zero. Now again, this is one of those terms where if the definition doesn't make sense just yet, that's okay. We are going to be using this term and this definition a lot, so you'll get used to it. You'll, you'll come to understand what the y-intercept is all about. Our next definition is for what is one of the three main forms of writing the equation of a line. And that is for what's called slope-intercept form, which can be defined as a linear equation written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So if we're given this type of equation, what we're looking for is our value for m and our value for b. There will, be generally, be, there will generally be numbers written in place of m and in place of b. The value that's written in place of m is going to be the slope, and the value that's written in place of b is going to be our y-intercept. Now, I'm not writing this down in the notes itself, but I want to see written in your notes, and you guys need to write this down. The coordinates of the y-intercept will be 0, comma, b. So 0, comma, b is in parentheses. Again, I'll say that again. The coordinates of the y-intercept will be at the order pair 0, comma, b. All right, so now that we've gone through and looked at our definitions, what I want to do is I want to go back to those four graphs that we've already looked at and see if we can identify what the value for b or the value for the y-intercept is going to be for each of those graphs. All right, so here we are back at examples 1 and 2, and essentially what we're looking for is a ordered pair where each line crosses the y-axis. Remember, the y-axis is this axis right here going up and down. So this is our y-axis. So in order to identify the point where the line crosses the y-axis, we want to look at the y-axis, and we want to look at the line itself. And we want to ask ourselves, all right, at what point does the y-axis and the line itself cross, or where do they intersect? And then for example one, it's going to be right at this point right here. That point is our coordinate for our y-intercept. And so I'm going to go ahead and write that out. So the coordinates for this point are going to be 0, comma 1, and therefore our value for b equals 1. Okay, I got that value for b from our y value right here. Our coordinate of our point for our y-intercept is 0, comma 1. So this value here, the y value of the coordinate, is going to be our value for our y-intercept. Going on and taking a look at example two. Again, we identify the y-axis and the line, and we look for the point where the line and the y-axis intersect, intersect, which is going to be right here. So if I were to go ahead and identify that point, 
which would be right here, my coordinates would be 0, comma, negative 2. Therefore, our value for b for this example is negative 2. And again, I got that value for b from this y value of the ordered pair. Okay, let's take a look at, back at examples 3 and 4 as well. All right, looking at example 3, again, here is our y-axis. Purple line is our line. We're looking for the point where the line and the y-axis intersect. And now, I didn't have this coordinate on the line itself, which is fine, but it's still what we're going to be looking for. So that point right there is what I'm looking for. The coordinates of that point, I don't go left or right at all, so my x value is going to be 0. But then I go up 3, and therefore my value for b is going to be 3. And again, I get that from right here. Okay, one more. Looking at our last graph, example 4. Y-axis, line that we're trying to identify the y-intercept for. Clearly, these two intersect right here. So that's the coordinates that I'm trying to, trying to find for that point there. That point has a coordinate value of 0, comma, negative 3. So therefore, my value for b is negative 3. And so for your homework, for a lot of these problems, all they're going to be asking you to do is they want you to identify the value for the slope and the value for the y-intercept. That's all that they want you to do for a lot of these. So for example, 4, your, your value for your slope would be negative 1 fourth. Your value for b would be negative 3. For our last example, we have a word problem that says the graph shows the money John earns parking cars. The y-intercept repre represents his fixed weekly salary while the slope represents the amount he earns per car parked. Determine his weekly rate and the amount earned per car. So essentially what we have here is a scenario in which John will earn a certain amount of money each week even if he parks zero cars. However, the more cars he parks, the more money he will make. So what we want to do is we want to identify both the slope and the y-intercept. Now the slope again will tell us how much money he earns per car, while the y-intercept will tell us how much he earns per week even if he doesn't park any cars. Now even though the x and y axes are not labeled in this problem, we should still know that the y-axis is going to be right here. So we're looking for the point where the line that we have here and the y-axis intercept. So those, that's going to happen right here at this point. So the coordinates for that point are going to be 0, 300. So that tells us that the, we have over here the y-intercept represents his fixed weekly salary. So therefore, his fixed weekly salary, the amount that he makes just for working, even if he doesn't park any cars, will be $300. So that's going to be our value for b. And so now what we also need to do is we need to figure out how much money he earns per car. So we have four points on this graph. We can start at any point except for this one here because we need to start at a point that's further to the left than another point. So we can choose any point that we want. We need to keep in mind the scale that we're going up by. Now for the x-axis, we see that we're going up by fives. Every other grid line represents 10, so we go up 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on from there. Now the y-axis, those are actually going up by 75 each. Even though we only have numbers listed at 150, 300, 450, each grid line represents us going up by 75. So if we go ahead and use this point here and this point here, that will be enough to help us figure out the slope keeping in mind the scale of the grid lines. So our first line that we have right here, I'm going to call that instead of plus 1, I'm going to call that plus 75. Okay, again, because each grid line represents 75 units. And then when we run to the right, we're actually running to the right plus 15. Okay? So our slope 
is going to be 75 over 15, which we can reduce to give us the value of 75 divided by 15 will give us 5. So $5 per car. So in this problem, we see that he makes $300 per week just for working, and then $5 additional per car that he parks. All right, so make sure that you write down any questions that you have. We will go over those tomorrow. And I'm hoping now that you're able to achieve the, our goal, which is to review finding slope and learn to identify the y-intercept from a graph.